HBWC, HBWC Nation. Thank you for joining us and tuning in tonight to our, our midweek sermon series, Dress for Success. Hallelujah. I am Elder Demario Foster. I will be your speaker this evening. Uh, I do want to honor my pastors tonight, Pastor Levi and Lady Felicia Rosier, for allowing this opportunity to stand before you great people on tonight. Amen. I do honor my family. Amen. My wife and my kids. I know you're at home watching. Thank you so much for your support, and I love you both. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So, again, this is our Dress for Success Midweek Sermon Series uh, for over the next couple of weeks, and we are talking about the armor of God. Amen. So, if not longer to do, let's pray. Dear Gracious Father, we thank you for this moment. We thank you for this time, Lord God, to rest in your presence, to release a word that you have for your people on today, today Lord God. Lord, uh, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, just decrease myself, Lord God, and you increase every word that's within me in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. If I was, amen, to take an excerpt out of this Dress for Success as a title, I would say, it fits. It fits. So the scripture reads in Ephesians 6 and 10, it says, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take a stand against the devil's schemes. It says, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Verse 13 says again, Therefore put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, to stand. Now I want to take this scripture and just bring it home a little bit and bring it to your doorstep. I want to read this in the Message Bible, and I want to start at verse 12 just to make it more plain to you. Verse 12 says, this is for keeps, a life or death fight to the finish against the devil and all his angels. Verse 13 tells us to be prepared. You're up against far more than you can handle on your own. Take all the help you can get. Every weapon God has issued. So that when it's all over. But the shouting. You'll still be on your feet. May God add a blessing to the reading of this word. Amen. Now I know we all have seen pictures of Roman soldiers in their armor. And as they must have appeared to Paul. For as Paul wrote this letter, he was in prison or under guard at all times. Indications are that he may have been under house arrest. So he may have been chained to a soldier even as he wrote and preached. So as he described the, the different pieces of armor, it would not have been difficult for him to do. One thing that he does not mention is that there is no armor, no protection of any kind of, for the back of a soldier. There was a reason for that. No retreat. Because if you, if you turn and run, you are exposed. That was supposed that the, 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 the armor that was provided and the armor that was given, it was supposed to keep the soldiers facing the enemy. If I was to take this, this, this text or, or this sermon and taught it to, to the kids in children's church, what I would do is I would show them a picture of one of these Roman soldiers. And I can guarantee you that the kids would recognize this picture as a knight. But then here's what I would do. I would show them the Bible and try to explain to them that the word of God is the Christian's armor. It's rather simplistic, and I am not sure if they would understand just how the words from the Bible could protect people from an attack. 
But that is just what Paul is telling us as he says to put on the whole armor of God. In order to put on the whole armor, we need to fully understand just what that armor is. Not just a simplistic understanding, but a complete knowledge of God's word. Preachers, teachers, and ministers, they often, they often speak about the spiritual things of the Bible and fail to mention that God is not a magician. He doesn't do magic tricks. He doesn't pull rabbits out of hats. Our battle that Paul speaks of is a spiritual battle against the prince of darkness. That is real. It is not an illusion. If you read the paper this morning, you, you would know what I'm talking about. People are doing all kind of bad stuff, and there are consequences. Drugs, alcohol, robbery, burglary, shootings, people just doing crazy things all around. But I would bet that if you ask, these same people would say they believe in Jesus Christ. And many would say they are a Christian. But they were obviously not wearing the armor. They were failed by the prince of darkness. We like to think that we are prepared, but we are not. Most of the time, our guard is down. And when our guard is down, at any given time, we are vulnerable. Many times, we would rather sit at home and watch a ball game instead of going to church. Everywhere we turn, there are things that get our attention, things that may take us in the wrong direction. And of course, it is easy, it is easy to rationalize and think we are not doing anything wrong besides everybody else is doing it. We don't sit around. We don't sit around and think about Jesus like Paul did. We live in a world where we have to go to work, where we have to go to school. We got to worry about bills. We got we to pay taxes. Come on, somebody. We got to pay taxes. Paul wrote to people just like us, and his reason for writing then is the same as he was writing today. He says, be prepared, stay ready, and pray. Because if we are in prayer mode, it is very hard to do anything else. It's like driving a car. It's like driving and talking on a cell phone, or one or the other has most of our attention. Paul said in 2 Timothy 2.15, he said, study to show thyself or yourself approved. The more we understand the word of God, the better we are prepared to withstand an assault against our faith. Good God Almighty. He says, he says, I'm going to calm myself down. He says, each piece of armor that Paul describes is a key ingredient Christian character development. I'm going to read that again. Each piece of armor that Paul describes is a key ingredient of Christian character development. What are you saying, Foster? With the exception of the sword, which is the word of God, they are all part of our being. A part of what makes us what we are. Paul uses this, this imagery to, to demonstrate to us the elements of Christian character building that are necessary to stay faithful and to stay alive in Jesus Christ. All of the pieces of the armor mentioned serve a particular purpose. The breastplate to protect the heart. The belt to protect the stomach and to help keep other pieces in place and to carry the scabbard with the sword, the helmet to protect the head from blows and heavy leather leg coverings and shoes that had pieces of copper or brass to protect the feet from spikes and straps. Now, I remember watching a movie called Gridiron Gang that stars Dwayne Johnson, better known as The Rock, and Malcolm Moore, better known as the hip hop artist Exhibit. These guys started a football team with a group of guys that was in a detention center. And by watching this movie, I remember at a moment of time, they was at practice, and one of the players took a very hard blow 
that brought him to his knees. Uh, everybody was looking around, the team was looking, and they seen how much pain and agony that he was in. And the coach walks up and asks him, are you all right? He said, no, coach, no, coach, it hurts in a certain area. Now, for all my football players, all my football scholars and watchers, there is a piece of protective equipment in football known as the cup. The cup protects a certain area in football on a man. So for all my men that are watching, all my men that are listening, I hope you know what the cup is and what the cup protects. So as the coach walked up to him, he was looking at him as he was in pain and in agony. He asked him, was you all right? He let him know that it was hurting, it was hurting. And he asked him, are you wearing the protection that I had provided for you? And he looks up at the coach and he says, coach, I can't wear that thing. The coach steps back and said, okay. He looks at the team and says, is there anybody else out here is not wearing the cup or the protection that I had provided? So the team looks around at each other, and every single one of them ran back to the locker room to reassess, to readjust the protected equipment that was provided. So as we talk about the shoes, that's why we have to wear the, the, the shoes for war, which is called the sandals of peace. Because with the right protection, we are called to be ready to stand against the schemes of the enemy. One of Satan's biggest evil schemes is to do everything he can to make sure that believers do as little of sharing the gospel as possible. Why does he focus on this? Why does the enemy or our enemy focus on this? It's because if the gospel is not shared, not yet believers would not come to faith. Why does he focus on this? Because if the gospel is not shared, the overall ministry of the church becomes distracted. Why does he focus on this? Because if the gospel is not shared, enthusiasm for the important work of God diminishes. This is why this piece of armor is so important. It is a call to stand firm with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. When it comes to our spiritual shoes, pastor, one size fits all. We cannot be those who are fully equipped unless we have the gospel. We will lack ministry focus unless we are willing to help people find peace with God. Paul is inviting us. He's inviting us to let God's word fit us with the feet of readiness. And I just have one question for each of you tonight. Do we have what it takes? And of course, the shield is to protect from arrows and thrust from spear and sword. But watch this. All of this is to do battle with a physical opponent. Someone who probably has the same armor and the same intent as any soldier or any believer to defeat the enemy and survive. Amen? So your armor, listen to this, your armor, including your shield of faith, will protect you as long as your courage does not fail. Your victory is sure as long as you keep your shield up and your feet on the ground. Ephesians 6.16 says, above all, mm -hmm. Paul said, in addition to all, taking up the shield of faith, which will be able to extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Paul said, in addition to everything else you have put on, you must put on the shield of faith. The shield of faith is your protection against the enemy, and, and, and it should be with you everywhere you go. When Paul, when Paul begins to list the pieces of, our, of our, our spiritual armor, again, he starts with the loin belt. He says in verse 14, Stand firm, therefore, having girded your loins with truth. This was the belt to which all the other equipment could be attached. 
Remember, I told you earlier that soldiers would attach their shields to their loin belt. Paul understood this because when he was led by the Holy Spirit to give us this analogy of our faith, spiritually based on Paul's description, our shield of faith is attached to our loin belt, which is the word of God, the Bible. Attached to the word of God is your shield of faith. As we discussed, when you become sure about something, you begin to expect something. This is your faith in action. The only way to become sure about what God will do for you is through the understanding of his word. Amen. Your faith is attached to the word of God. Your faith and its strength is directly tied to your knowledge and understanding of God's word. This is why, this is why Paul calls it the shield of faith instead of the loin belt of faith. The word of God is not attached to our faith. Our faith is attached to God's word. If we, if we fail to give God's word a place of priority in our lives, it is only a matter of time before our faith will begin to fail. The presence of or absence of faith is determined by the presence of or absence of God's word in our lives. This is why Paul said in Romans 10, 17 that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. God's word and faith are so tied together that where there is no word, there is no faith. And where there is no faith, it is because the word of God is absent. My God. Our shields must be designed and capable of sustaining us during battle. Strong faith shields is determined by the presence or absence of God's word in your life. Now think about this for a moment. Think about this for a moment. We arm ourselves against a possible attack. Yet we leave ourselves vulnerable to a spiritual attack. It is the spiritual attack that we should fear most. This is what Paul is warning us about. Don't lower your shield even for a second. Because if you do, the enemy or your enemy arrows is sure to get through. Now I know y'all remember the story of David and Goliath. It's, it's, it's a story that that we have heard since our first Sunday school class. It is one of the first Bible stories that we have learned. But unless we have really read it, we missed a lot of the details. So go back sometime, read the story sometime in detail. It's found in 1 Samuel 17. That story tells us that Goliath was a huge man. Some say over nine feet tall. Others say as much as 11 feet, 4 inches. Either way, he was a big man. But check this. Check this out. Check this. Even though he was the biggest, even though he was the baddest, hired gun Philistine, the Philistines could find, he still wore his armor. He still wore his armor because he knew that without the armor he could easily be killed without it so for 40 days he would march down the hill and shout at Saul's army and challenge them to send their best man out to fight him we're just getting over our all-star weekend and it says he said winner takes all winner takes all so we, we, we know what the story tells us. King Saul and his army were so afraid of Goliath that they would hide in their tents. It is, said, it is said that his armor was so highly polished that when sunlight struck it, it appeared as like an angel of light. He was fully prepared for battle against every single opponent 
But watch this. He had a shield bearer to go ahead of him to carry his shield, leaving his hands free to do battle. Come on, y'all know what happens next in the story. Then here comes David. And he asked the army, why is the army afraid of this loud mouth when the almighty God is on their side? Then he is taken before the king and he volunteers to fight this monster. He volunteers to fight this giant. Now, I'm sure this caused a lot of laughs because at that time, at that moment, David was just a boy. Not even old enough to join the army. But he tells King Saul that he had that he had fought the lion and the bear with only a knife and killed them both. And this Goliath is not near as fierce as they were. Come on, we know what happens next. King Saul accepts his offer. But watch this. And gives David his own armor. He gives David his own armor, which he, which he puts on and tries to walk, but he finds it too heavy and restrictive to be of any use. Plus, he was used to fighting without it. Now, King Saul gave David a grown man's belt, a size 34, where he needed a size 12. Saul gave David a shield that weighed 120 pounds when he can only lift 75. So what King Saul gave David didn't fit to stand against his enemy. So he takes his shepherd's staff and his slingshot and picks up a few, watch this, carefully selected rocks from the stream. Why, why carefully selected? Why carefully selected? Because David probably already sized up Goliath. He probably already sized up Goliath to, to know what he needed to take down this giant. Y'all know how it is when we was back in school and we get in the fights, we, we size them up. We, 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 we size them up, we get in their face, we look up, we look down, sizing them up, backing up, backing up, going for it, just sizing up the enemy, knowing what we need to do to take down our enemy. So he carefully selected, he carefully selected rocks from the stream, from the streams and marches out to face this man nearly three times his size. Oh, Goliath was furious. First, they have sent the boy to face him with no visible weapons, no armor. And he says to David, am I a dog that you come to fight me with a stick? And he cursed David and said, here I will give your carcass to the birds and the beasts to feed on. 1 Samuel 17, 45 says, David said to the Philistine, You come against me with sword and spear and javelin. What you say the other week, Pastor? But what I do have, even though you may see, may not see the visible weapons, but what I do have. Even though I don't have on the armor, but what I do have, I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. He says in 46, says, this day the Lord will hand you over to me, and I'll strike you down and cut your head off. He says, today I will give, not you, but I will give the carcasses to the Philistine army, to the birds of the air, and the beasts of the earth, and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. He said in 47, he says, all those gathered here will know that it is not by sword, it is not by spear that the Lord saves, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give all of you into our hands. So David wore, David wore the armor of faith. He believed that God was on his side. And if God before us, who can stand against us? My God, I believe we just need to take that faith with us right now. 
that if God before you, who in the world can stand against you? I dare you to just type in the feed right now that if God before me, what can stand against me? Hallelujah. Again, David wore the armor of faith. He believed that God was on his side. And he said, if God before us, what, who, no devil in hell can stop me from my destiny. Can no enemy stop my praise. Not none enemy can stop my worship. Because if God before me, who can stand against me? So listen. I got a few more minutes left and I'm about to close. Listen. Listen. My God. Again, take that faith with you. If God before us, who, who can stand against us? Listen. Listen carefully to the words of Paul. Study the word of God. Carry it in your heart. Wear it like armor. Defensively, attack the prince of darkness. Be prepared against the enemy that attacks the spirit and destroys the soul from within. I came to encourage you tonight to stand tall in faith. Be assured, rest assured that God is on your side and you will, oh my God, I decree and declare tonight that you will, you will win over evil. Amen. Let us pray. Dear gracious Father, we thank you now, God. God, we thank you for this word that you have provided for your people tonight to stand against the schemes of the enemy, Lord God. God, we thank you tonight that the armor that you have provided us fits, God. It fits, God. It's not too loose, God. It's not too heavy. It's nothing that we cannot carry, God. We thank you for the armor that you have provided for your people on tonight, God. For in our lives, God, we know that you be glorified and you be lifted high in the name of Jesus. Thank you for allowing us to stand tall in our faith, God. We are assured, God, we rest assured that you are here with us and you are on our side. And we know that we will win over evil. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Again, HBWC, HBWC Nation, thank you for joining us and tuning in with us tonight. Amen. Also, if you desire to give, amen, the ways to give is on the screen tonight. Come on and bless the house in your giving. Amen. Bless the house in your giving. And let us, let me just pray over your, your giving now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the ones that are giving tonight. Oh, God, we ask you to bless their households, Lord God, 104,000, fourth million, fourth right now, God. Return to them, Lord God, a blessing like never before, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Bless their giver. Bless their tithe. Bless their offering in the name of Jesus. Bless their hands, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, God, we give you praise, we give you glory, and we give you honor. And it's in Jesus' name, amen, amen. Again, thank you for tuning in to this midweek's Dress for Success sermon series, amen, talking about the armor of God, amen. Be prepared to hear another one on next week, amen. And we are excited to stand before you to deliver what God has provided for us, amen. We pray you have a great week, amen. And we will see you Sunday morning, 10 a.m. God bless.